Welcome to AP Calculus uh, Lesson 2.5a. 2.5a, this is our last lesson in Unit 2, uh, introducing the concept of the derivative. I'd like to thank Mark Sparks for providing this curriculum that we're working through. In these few pages, we're really going to review and connect this idea of the derivative, uh, the derivative as the slope of the tangent line to a particular point of a function. If you're joining us in 2016, I am uh, adding a slightly different approach to the lecture videos, and that is that I'm going to ask more questions as we go through. When I ask a question, at least mentally think through what would your answer be, briefly. And if you have the time, you'll get the most out of the videos by pausing for a moment, thinking through the question, coming up with what your answer would be, and then going ahead and pressing play in order to uh, see if your answer matches the correct answer. And just as a reminder, be sure to write down any questions that you have as we progress through the lesson to be ready to ask those in class. Our first question here asks us to find g prime of negative 4. So this is the first thing we're supposed to do, is find g prime of negative 4. And g prime, that means our derivative. To find the derivative of g, we're going to take the derivative of g. And thus far, we've really only learned one approach for taking derivatives, and that is the power rule which means that this needs to be rewritten in what format? A polynomial form. Our polynomial form will have a one term plus or minus another term plus or minus another term. So for g of x, in order to rewrite this in polynomial form, what would be our first step? Well, we would need to expand out this x squared plus 2 squared. I could rewrite this x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 4 and we need to multiply out we could FOIL or perfect square uh, this binomial here 1 half x squared what would come next after the x squared is plus 4x that's the outer uh, plus the inner 4x plus 4, minus 4. One more step uh, before I can combine my like terms. What is that step? I need to distribute my 1 half. So g of x equals x squared over 2, plus 4x over 2, plus 4 over 2, minus 4. These can be rewritten x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 2 minus 4. We can combine like terms and write this uh, 1 half. We'll go ahead and write this 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 2. And what we found here is our g of x. All we've done so far is rewrite this in polynomial form. Once it's in polynomial form, now I can take the derivative. So g prime of x would be my first term is uh, multiply times 2. 2 over 1 times 1 half is 1x. Derivative of 2x is plus 2. Derivative of negative 2 is 0. So this right here is the derivative uh, at x and they ask me specifically to find the derivative at negative 4. g prime of negative 4. So what will I do with this negative 4? Well, I'll evaluate the derivative at negative 4, which gives me negative 2. I have now found g prime of negative 4. That's what this first part right here asked me to find. Well, let's check the next part. And, so I need to do more than one thing. Explain. This is my verb. If I need to explain, I'm going to use words. What does this value represent in terms of the graph? So not just, well, it's the derivative. I could write out the word derivative, but specifically in terms of the graph of the function. And whenever we think derivative, uh, graphically we should think 
tangent line, specifically the slope of the tangent line. So g prime of negative 4 represents the slope of the tangent line. Now, does it represent the slope of the tangent line everywhere? Is the slope of this line, of any line tangent, is that slope going to be equal everywhere? No. So this represents a specific slope, and specifically it represents the slope of the tangent line drawn at x equals negative 4. I know it's x because my negative 4 is inside the function, which is where I would put my x, my independent variable. Next, we're asked to find the equation of that tangent line. Find the equation of the tangent line. What two pieces of information do I need in order to find the equation of the tangent line? Two things. They are the point of tangency, the pot and the slope of tangency, the sot. My point of tangency is going to be an x and a y value. What is my x value at x equals negative 4? Negative 4. What is my y value at x equals negative 4? Well, I'm given a graph so I can find my y value on the graph. Looking at this graph, what is my y value? At x equals negative 4, y equals negative 2. So my coordinates are negative 4, negative 2. Secondly, I need my slope of tangency. How do I find out what the slope of my tangent line is? What should I think of when I think slope of the tangent? I should think of the derivative. And in the previous part, I found the derivative. And specifically, I want the derivative at x equals negative 4 the derivative at negative 4. That will be my slope of tangency at negative 4. And in the previous part, I found that that slope was what? I found that the slope was a negative 2. With my point of tangency and my slope of tangency, I can now find my equation with the point-slope formula, which starts y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, y minus negative 2 equals, m is my slope, x minus negative 4. These become positive, these become positive. Now I can distribute negative 2x minus 8 and subtract this 2 from each side. y equals negative 2x minus 10. And really these are two different forms here of the equation of my tangent line. So that answered the first part. There's my first verb, find. Then I'm also asked to sketch, sketch a graph of this tangent line. So my point of tangency was negative 4, negative 2. This is where I need to draw my tangent line. And the slope of my tangent line is negative 2. When drawing a straight line uh, with a point, then I go down for negative and across. This is negative 2 for over 1. Over 1. Negative 2 over 1 and vice versa. So these are the points that my tangent line is going to go through. And then I can draw that a little rough on the computer. And that gives me my point of tangency. My, and that gives me my tangent line. My third question asks me to find using uh, the equation of the tangent line. So I want to find y. I'm going to solve for y when x equals negative 3.9 using the equation of the tangent line. I found the equation of the tangent line in my previous question. 
I'm going to use our simplified version from over here. y equals negative 2x minus 10. And again, it said use the equation of the tangent line. It asks me to find y. 1x equals negative 3.9. y equals negative 2 times negative 3.9 minus 10. The rest is just algebra. Positive uh, 7.8 minus 10 equals negative 2.2. So I've answered all the way up to here. I found y, 1x equals negative 3.9. Then they ask me to find the function g at negative 3.9. For that, I need to go all the way back up to my original function, which was g of x equals 1 half x plus 2 squared minus 4. g of x equals 1 half x plus 2 squared minus 4. They ask me to find g of negative 3.9. Find the function at negative 3.9. So what will be my approach? Well, I'm finding g of negative 3.9, so I'll plug negative 3.9 in in order to evaluate for that. Negative 3.9 plus 2 squared. So, negative uh, 3.9 plus 2 is negative 1.9. And that squared is negative 3.61. Half of that is 1.805. which leaves me, uh, when I subtract 4, negative 2.195. The number 4 asks me to compare these two values. What do I notice about the values of these two results? Well, what do you notice from this result, negative 2.2, and this result, negative 2.195? Well, to answer this first question, these two values are very close to each other. They're very close in value to each other. Okay, that's my comparison. They're very close in value to each other. Then it asks, what does this imply about how the equation of the tangent line could be used? So because I would get a very similar value from the tangent line as I would from the function, when I am finding the value of a function very close to a particular point, I can actually use the derivative as well. And you can write it out this way. Because of this, the value of a function can be approximated using the equation of the tangent using the equation of the tangent if if the x value in question is close to the point of tangency. Close to the point of tangency. And graphically, what this looks like is that if I have a curve and I choose a tangent line, and I draw a line tangent roughly here. For any value really close to x, if I were to zoom in, 
so that I'm nice and close. Then the value of my function is pretty close to the value of my tangent line. They're very close when I'm within a decent range of x. So x point 1 or uh, x minus 1 point 9. So just to the left or just to the right. We typically use this with the point 0.9 or the point 0.1. And my tangent line is a, a simpler equation that would allow me to estimate values that are in very close to x to the point of tangency. On our next page, we're given this graph of uh, 2 radical x minus x plus 2 g of x, and we use this for questions 5 through 9. Our first question asks, uh, at what values does the graph have a horizontal tangent? And since it's essentially asking where, we're going to be searching for, will this be an x value or will this be a y value? When asking for where, we're looking for an x value. And are they asking us to find this based on the analytical equation or based on the graph? Well, this specifically says based on the graph, so we're going to look at the graph to estimate where we will have a horizontal tangent. Now, graphically, uh, where would I see a horizontal tangent? On what two types of graphical features? Well, I would see a horizontal tangent at a maximum or at a minimum, relative maximum or minimum. At which x value does this graph have a maximum or a minimum? Well, I have one right here, which seems to be at approximately x equals 1. So I could say that uh, g of x, that's my function, has a horizontal tangent, has a horizontal tangent at x equals 1. That has established at what values my function has a horizontal tangent. Next, I need to give a reason. What is my reason? Because, because what? How did we find that horizontal tangent? Because g of x has a relative maximum there. Lastly, new verb, it asks us to show an algebraic, so not graphical, algebraic, going back to my function analysis, that supports my answer. So I want to show that uh, I have a horizontal tangent at x equals 1 analytically. Well, I can't look for a relative maximum or minimum, but what's true where I have a horizontal tangent? Do I know anything for sure about my function? Well, I know my function has a relative maximum or minimum. But how can I determine where? How can I find that place? It has to do with the derivative and it is where the derivative equals zero. A well, horizontal tangent means that my derivative equals zero. So we can take our function uh, rewrite this in polynomial form and take the derivative. What would the derivative of 2x to the 1 half be? I would bring down the 1 half times 2 is 1, x to the negative 1 half. The derivative of negative x is negative 1. The derivative of 2 is 0. Rewriting this back in its radical form, uh, to change my negative exponent to positive, I'll move it to the denominator, and my fractional exponent into a radical will be over radical x minus 1. Now this is my derivative and I want to show an algebraic analysis that supports my answer that I have a horizontal tangent. Horizontal tangent meaning that the derivative at that value equals 0. Horizontal tangent derivative equals 0. 
and I specifically want to prove, I want to support, sorry, I want to support that that is true at x equals 1. I can go ahead and just plug that in and prove that it would be true, and that would support my answer. So g prime at 1 equals 1 over radical 1 minus 1 equals 0. Is this true? Well, square root of 1 is 1. 1 over 1 minus 1 equals 0, and this is true. I could also have just found x prime and set that equal to 0. 1 over radical x minus 1 equals 0. 1 over radical x equals 1. Uh, take the reciprocal. Radical x equals 1. And square both sides. x equals 1. And I find that x equals 1 when the derivative equals 0. So this is my algebraic analysis, and to show that it supports my answer, I can say that since g prime uh, equals 0, 1x equals 1, g has a horizontal tangent g has a horizontal tangent at x equals 1. Don't be afraid to be a little bit uh, redundant in the pursuit of clarity and of communicating everything in your answer. Number 6 asks, on which intervals is the derivative negative? The derivative negative. How do I know that my derivative is negative? What's my relationship between the derivative being negative and the function? My derivative is negative, and we'll go ahead and give our reasoning right up front. Our derivative is negative where my function is decreasing, where my function is decreasing. Looking at my graph, my function reaches a maximum right here at 1, and then begins to decrease, and this arrow here means until x approaches infinity. Therefore, my interval is on 1 on the interval 1 to infinity. On what interval is g prime greater than 0? Where is the derivative positive? Well, how do I know where my derivative is positive? My derivative is positive. I can write this out. g prime is greater than 0. My derivative is positive where? where my function where my function is increasing uh, therefore it's on the interval where is my function increasing well it's increasing here starting at 0 until about 1, and that's where we'll go graphically, is on the interval from 0 to 1. I've given the reason first, and then answered on what interval. And number 8, for what value of x is the slope of the tangent line equal to 2? So I'm being asked to find x. This is what I want to solve for. What should I think when I read the slope of the tangent line? Slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So I want to find for what x values does my derivative equal 2? Looking back up here, this is my derivative function. But now instead of setting it equal to 0, 
I want to take this function, g prime equals 1 over radical x minus 1, and do what with it? Well, I want to know where does my derivative equal to, so I'm going to set my derivative equal to 2 and solve for x. 1 over radical x equals, add 1 to each side, 3. I will use my uh, reciprocal rules. Radical x over 1 equals 1 over 3. And square both sides. x equals 1 ninth. And that's where. And looking at our graph, we can kind of visually see that that makes sense. I want to know where my derivative is 2, which is maybe somewhere along here. That's roughly a slope of 2. And that would be very close to 0. And in this case, it would be at 1 ninth. Finally, number 9 asks us to find the equation of the tangent line. What two pieces of information do we need in order to find the equation of the tangent line? The point of tangency, pot, and the slope of tangency, sot. For my point of tangency, I need an x and a y, and my x is given as x equals 4. What approach can I use to find my y value where x equals 4? I actually have two options. I could look at my graph and see if it's an exact value, and in fact I find that when x equals 4, y equals 2. I could also plug 4 into my original function here. 2 times radical 4 is 2. Minus 4 plus 2. 4 minus 4 is 0 plus 2 equals 2. And I could get the same result analytically or graphically. So my y value is 2. Now that we have our point of tangency, we can find our slope of tangency. When we think slope of the tangent line, we should think what? The derivative. So I want to find the derivative specifically at x equals 4. And I could check to see if at any point I found the derivative at 4. But looking through our work, I don't see any place where we evaluated the derivative for 4. So we can take this derivative function and evaluate it for x equals 4. So 1 over radical 4 minus 1 is 1 over 2 minus 1 equals negative 1 half. So this is my slope of tangency. With my point of tangency and my slope of tangency, now I can find my, uh, using my point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I could leave this in this form or uh, distribute and add 2 to each side. Distribute should be negative 1 half x plus 2 and add 2 to each side. y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. And now we found the equation of the tangent line. Finally, it asks us, new verb, to draw the tangent line on the grid above. So we're going to go to our point of tangency, x equals 4, and use a slope of negative 1 half. Here is x equals 4. Here's my point. A slope of negative 1 half means that I'll go down 1 and over 2, down 1 and over 2 and in the opposite direction. You can finally draw a line to go with that. And that roughly is the slope at the graph of the tangent line at x equals 4.